pleasure to meet you, especially because of what you're doing, because growing up back in the day for myself, what you are presenting on city TV would have been unheard of. Um, mm. Even if it was lucky enough to something be played during Black History Month back in the day. Um, and then again, really back in the day, there was no Canadian version of Black History Month. So mm. what you have accomplished is amazing. What are we going to be seeing uh, very shortly on television that is very important to Canadian history? So we're going to be looking at an in-depth look at Toronto, Ontario, Black history, because Black history is Canadian history. We're going to look at the social movements like Caravana, the hip-hop community and its birth from the late 80s forward. We're going to be looking at the archival footage and the importance of archiving our history, as well as there's an episode on photography and literature. And what's it called? I want to make sure people know this. Black Community Mixtapes. Incredible name. What made you decide to work on something like this? And give me a little bit about your background, too, because I know you're an actress. Yes. So I started off in this series in 2019 in the pre-development stage. So I was a writer researcher in that pre-development stage of the series. And what really interested me about this was its use of archival footage. So we use Winston LaRose's archive, which we'll see in the series finale of the show, or the season finale of the show. And I think what really attracted me to that was the fact that there was so much history here that I hadn't seen before and that I hadn't learned about before. And digitizing that was really um, interesting for me. And so and also reaching out to like the Black Action Defense Committee, you know, the Ontario Black History Society and all of these places that I didn't even know about because I, again, we don't learn about it in school. And so coming from a research standpoint in this series was what um, attracted me to it. And then when Allison and Gaddy of Oya Media Group um, also found that I was an actor and I would host um, a lot of their graduation ceremonies as well. So they saw me kind of grow over the years. They asked if I would host the show and I said, yes. Growing up, learning about black history, you probably did the same, learned the same way as I did from your parents, correct? Yes. What was that like for your parents teaching you growing up? And of course being, and I, I, can I assume you you grew up in Toronto? Yes. Okay, so growing up in Toronto, what was it like being taught your Black history, um, but living in Toronto in a multicultural city? One, if not, if I'm correct, the most multicultural city in the world. Yeah, it was really interesting. Um, my mother immigrated from Jamaica and my father is from Trinidad. And so there was always a huge Caribbean culture in my upbringing and in learning about the Black culture of Canada and of, you know, Toronto, but it was always very Caribbean focused because we are Caribbean. And so I think what's really great about this series and what's really great about um, hopefully things moving forward is that we look at the landscape of the Black culture in Canada being beyond just the Caribbean or just Africa or just Nova Scotia. And so I think now we get a larger sense of, you know, what is Black history, Black Canadian history from all aspects of the diaspora. See, for me growing up, my Black history, my parents are Guyanese. So mm -hmm. I've learned a different way from, say, maybe that you did. How do you connect the dots? Because you you do say about Caribbean, how do you connect the dots so that you can say your parents are from this part? I can say my family is from this part. But from what I've seen, it sounds like you connect the dots to make sure everything comes together, no matter what part of the Caribbean that you're from. Yeah. What is so beautiful about like the Black community is that there are over 220 subcultures within the community, but yet they're so similar, you know, within the food and the music and the clothing. And that's something that we really see, you know, the the similarities of all of these things and our, us as Caribbeans are a lot of our roots coming from the Af Africa and the, being of the African diaspora. And so I think that's what this 
series really does a good job on is highlighting the fact that Toronto is a huge um, Caribbean culture, but also there are a lot of African roots that we dial back to um, from the slave trade and everything that is also being highlighted in our, our history here. What were some of the things that you were surprised about that you learned actually doing this that you were just like, why the hell was I taught this when I was growing up? Yeah, I think it was just, you know, if you Google, and when I was doing the research in the very beginning, in the pre-development stage, one of the things that really shocked me was if you Google if his, if slavery was in Canada, it comes up as no, but that's not true. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> there, was, there was definitely slavery in Canada. And so, you know, we are a British colony. We are a large we're a country, but we're just like a large British colony. And so looking at looking to see where like how long slavery was here but then again where people emigrated to the different parts of even in Toronto like streets that now that we would call Jarvis Street and Carlaw like those were the areas that had huge predominant black communities of you know of, of fleeing from the United States to Canada and this is where they landed so I think that was really interesting knowing that our black history is all around us. Oh, it, it 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 definitely is. One of the lines that I love, and I don't want to give too much away uh, it, it, from the episode that I saw, which, of course, is why I'm wearing the shirt to hip hop. <laughs> and you say, and I may have said the words a little differently, but uh, sorry, but uh, Drake did not like invent or wasn't the first hip hop artist or the breakthrough artist. I love that you said that. Why was that important for you to say that in that particular episode? I think sometimes, you know, in the newer generations, we feel like history starts with us, but we have mm -hmm. to understand that history, there's so much that has gone on before we even got here. And just because somebody is the most famous in something doesn't necessarily mean that they have been the most influential or have had, you know, like the door was open for Drake for there to be a Drake. And I think that that's really important to note with, you know, with the maestros and the Mishy Mees and the Cardinal officials and all of those artists coming up. And it was really beautiful to kind of highlight them and give them their flowers in that moment. So I think I, what I would hope is that we can look back and know that there was a thriving hip hop community in the late 80s and early 90s in Toronto. When we think about hip hop, we think about New York, we think about all these like cities in the States, but Toronto was just as thriving. And so I think highlighting that is really important. And just to give Drake his dues, he does acknowledge that. Yes, and he did. He does for sure. But he people, does. I think people don't, but he does. So yes. it's like, you got to know where you came from. Yeah. And, and I found that episode particularly I find a lot of the episodes great, but uh, that one in particular, because um, that's, of course, where as a teenager, uh, becoming a young adult uh, is where I grew up through. And uh, I'll just say this without giving too much away. Uh, yes, Shopped at Monica's very much. And I do have that vinyl. I'll leave it to that. <laughs> I won't say anything else. I'll let people figure that out once they see that first yeah. episode. Um, how does I'm just curious, how do your family and friends feel about you putting this together? They're really excited. I have such a strong support team. Um, my parents are showed like very slightly in the series a bit, just with archival footage and photos and videos. And so when I was telling them about this, they were kind of like, oh, okay, this is really cool. Again, like you were saying, they were like, we've never seen anything like this in mainstream media, in primetime television. And so they're really excited to watch, to also learn. I think that that's what's really beautiful about this is that this is entertaining, but also there is a learning and educational standpoint to it. And also we want this show to be a, a call to action. You know, it, my goal would be for people to watch the show and think, hmm, I think I have like five or 10 VHS tapes in my basement. I wonder what's on them or their grandparents' basements. There's a few um, archival footage of Caravana that I got from my grandpa's basement because he was the one that was always recording like the early days of Carnival Nations and helping create their costumes. And so he had boxes and boxes of tapes. And finally, he I was able to convince him to give me five. 
So I hope that after he watches them, I can say, okay, grandpa, can I please digitize the other 100 tapes that you have? And so I think my family has been really supportive and I'm really excited for people to watch the show and then hopefully discover their own Canadian history in their own basements. Are you hoping, but when you say that to me, it sounds like older folks like myself, what do you directly hope for the younger folks growing up who may think they're, they're discovering history, but again, as you pointed out, there's a lot they don't know. Yeah. I want them to have that same call to action, you know, because when we think about digitizing VHS tapes and that process, um, it kind of feels like a like Gen Z millennial thing where you put it in this this um, this machine and then now you have it as an MP4, on, you know, on your phone. And like something that I was able to do in my spare time was like digitize my parents' wedding video. And that was so cool to be able to like, now I have it on my phone. I can just like watch it whenever I, I want to versus it was like a thing that we did around around like the family TV and it was like an event. And so I think it would just be so cool if younger people, people in like high school and in college, university are, are able to then take these, the, the things that they have in their own homes, whether that be photographs I say tapes a lot but there's also like photo albums that need dusting off you know there are cds there's songs and so it would be just really great to kind of bring all of this material to the forefront because ultimately we need a place for it to be we need a um archival storage almost like a black museum a national black museum yes. to have all of these things so absolutely with that and by the way too I love how you snuck in that clip from Boogie again People have to watch it to know what yeah. I'm talking about. So, and by the way, I was on Boogie Jr. back then oh, too. Wow. So that's why I was like, oh yeah, she knows what she's doing. Congratulations on this amazing series. Cross fingers that there's going to be a season two on this mm -hmm. because there's plenty of history to discover and talk about. Congratulations yes. again and cannot wait to see all the episodes. Thank you so much.